indeed. But we are going to park, park the All Blacks for this week and have a look at their opponents for next week. Mm. Our own charges, Ireland. Yes. Uh, uh, we, back we, in action this weekend, hosting Japan at the Aviva Stadium, Lansdowne Road, Dublin. 1 p.m. kickoff in the afternoon. We're going to be there. Yes, that's um, right. It's going to be great. Um, it's to be refereed by Nika um, Amashukeli. Who oh, is Georgian. the Georgian ref? Yes. And also, by the way, the most jacked ref you'll ever see. That's right. Um, yeah, and yeah. he is—he's a good ref. And I was watching him at rugby Europe level, and it's great to see some sort of some more diversity some pathway um, forward for for some of these other. Yeah, refs. indeed. Well, yeah. when can you look at how the standard of refereeing in the top tier rugby has been? You wonder why we're limiting ourselves to so few pools um, yeah, to choose true, from. So true. it's great to see a little more diversity in in the tier one refing. And I think this guy's a good ref, so congratulations to him. I hope he goes well. Yeah. Um, Damon Murphy and Pierre Brousse are going to be helping him out in the touchline with Eric Gozan in as TMO. Um, both sides, the sides have met nine times overall, with Ireland winning eight. And I, I don't know, when was that defeat? That we, I don't know. I can't remember. I, no, I blanked it from my memory. No, um, in fact, don't drop it in the comments, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Japan obviously beating Ireland in the pool stage 19, in 12, 2019. Recall, yeah. Um, do you? I do. <laughs> there you go. Burned into my brain somewhere <laughs> in, in the repressed file. Yeah. Um, um, obviously last time out Ireland edged a nine try thriller at the Viva Stadium in the summer it was one of the more exciting games of the summer series true, um, true, very definitely good for the neutral a little hard on the uh, on the hearts of the Irish it fans. was very hard on the hearts of the Irish like they're, they're <laughs> a very tough team they're a tough team to get your head around or contain for, for a whole game Japan they come to play and the Wallabies demonstrated a, w- a week or so ago that like yeah they can mix it they're, they're hard to put to bed yeah for sure no question and uh yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, Ireland with the uh, with the return of their uh, of their Lions and their top team. Yeah. Um, they have named their side for this week. It's not been without a bit of consternation from the Irish fans. Very, very Leinster heavy. And yeah. um, they've gone with Andrew Porter, who's now gone to loose head. Um, Ronan Kelleher, special kind of format hooker. Tyg Furlong, a tight head. Tyg Byrne, James Ryan in as locks. Caelan Doris, Josh van der Fleer and Jack Cohn make up an explosive all Leinster back row. True. Then they've got uh, Whiskey, Jameson Gibson Park at nine, partnering Johnny Sexton, that club partnership. Bundy Aki comes in from Connacht with uh, Gary Ringrose in the absence of Robbie Henshaw. Yeah. And then the back three of James Lowe, Andrew Conway and Hugo Keenan. Yeah. Um, with some explosive players on the bench as well. Dan Sheehan, I'm excited to see. Um, Biggie and Henderson, Peter O'Mahony to come on. Very, very good. And uh, Connor Murray, obviously experienced there. Keith Earls and Joey Carberry covering 10 as well. It's definitely a strong team. It's definitely yeah. an explosive team. I love the um, the sort of loose forwards. We've picked uh, basically four Tyburn alongside them in the row. Yeah. I think for this match, it makes a lot of sense to have Tyburn, Doris, Josh and Jack all in there yeah. because they're going to do the bulk of the work and they're they going to be what determines they're, whether they're, we win they're, this they're, game. They're some of the forwards we have capable of moving at the speed that Japan want to play the game at as well. So it's, yeah. a, it's a horses for courses thing as well. It's a, it's a rangy kind of uh, very mobile pack as well as being physical. Yeah. And um, Ronan, Ronan Kelleher himself functions a bit like a loose forward. So I think in that five, you really do have an explosive group of players yeah. who are going to be trying to basically undo everything Japan want to do, beat them in the contact on both sides Slow of the ball. ball. Yeah. And in type in Ty Burn and Harris in particular you have two guys who do look for the jackal they do. which even, is crucial even Porter and Kelleher look yeah, for the yeah. jackal in the front row so it's like yeah no, they have useful the, useful assets the jackal will be very important in this game yeah. Yeah, Ireland need to stop Japan on the ball they need to not drive them back but also if they get if Japan get themselves isolated with their sort of romantic plays Ireland need to be hunting that ball and turning it over yeah. and not allowing Japan to, to get any kind of momentum on the ball truly no it starts at the contact area as it oft, oft does for, for Ireland but this one particularly stylistic stylistically it makes sense that uh, they need to be physical uh, technical but also slow tackles whatever which way that takes that can be a tackle that starts as a, a, a maul attempt then the knee goes to floor they release them but it's slow it's, it means that the rook is therefore cleared a little bit later and it gives the time the line a time to set because like there's no there's no Robbie Henshaw out there who is a defensive leader in the back line they're going to want to disrupt the tempo of the Japanese at source and that'll involve good aggression at the set piece as well which is something that Paul O'Connell has had his fingerprints all over during the Six Nations they were 
conceding a few penalties for jumping across and playing the man in the air, but that was a symptom of just them going for it nearly all the time. When they get the read, they go for it. And guys like Byrne are good jumpers, even at, even at the last minute, and they can get up there and, and disrupt. Uh, James Ryan, who didn't start his career doing that, but he has started doing that this season, particularly in, uh, over the yeah, last year. Yeah, and it's a good job for him because he has been, like, to be for him to be leading the line out now is kind of something. Ian Henderson has been calling the line outs. He's on the bench. Peter O'Mahony is on the bench. So obviously, if the line good, out goes good to, line if the line out, to yeah, come in, yeah. if the line out goes to pot or if they're just not competing as they want to in that area, they do have two very good operators to bring in. But it's kind of a test of where James Ryan is at. Can he run the line out as smoothly as uh, as Ireland want him to and need him to in the future? Yeah, um, that's going to be a good challenge. I think yeah, it's a, it, as you say, it's about winning the contact zone, uh, getting on top of them at set piece, and I would definitely be targeting from a defensive point of view, being sort of way way more um, sort of what would be the word just stingy in terms of what they give up yeah. I want to see like the, the way the game is going these days it's a little more about pressure than it is about um, than it is about sort of the containment that Ireland have been doing they've been doing a sort of a, a defence that isn't that isn't aggressive that's kind of reactive instead of proactive it's more about getting out of the line they have some really good shooters they have Bundy Aki and Josh van der Fleer yeah. who Josh van der Fleer will lead the line all day on the inside Bundy Aki and Gary Ringrose who's had a great start to the season in defence but granted at URC level yeah, he's, he's up against Lafayette which is a handful. heck of, heck yeah, of yeah. a job but Ireland it, like the way that modern defences are going the ones that are having the most success are the aggressive pressure defences the yeah. blitzing defences the, the, that, that, the one that Leinster are bringing and it is a very Leinster centric team is is a kind of a numbered up ver- version where n- the tackler tackles releases straight away and bounces yeah. back up to get back into the line and be pillar and then it allows them to keep 13 or so men on their feet and then they do blitz on the inside through Josh van der Fleer bring that pressure tight but then the rest of them kind of do a little drift and pass yeah, the it's, thing just, it's very good for Leinster at uh, I know, RC level but it's, it's, it's a um, lower level and it, yeah. you do end up with situations where there's like two on twos in about 10 metres of space and that can sometimes be all Japan needs yeah. and can, like it, it feels a bit like um, the obvious thing to say is that you play a containment defence to not put too much pressure on your wingers because you don't want like if, if you're blitzing your winger's going to come up and obviously that's been a huge issue for James Lowe and his time the Ireland sure. jersey flying out of the Stop line and, issues and, there and getting well. the reads wrong and yeah. Keith Earls as well and yeah. like they all do it but they like it, it they when 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 the team is cohesively blitzing actually the wingers can often be less exposed yeah. because the 13 is doing it on his inside and when you're bringing that much pressure it's just much more difficult for the opposition to to execute at any kind of a level and to actually find space whereas sometimes when you're allowing the opposition to go through multiple phases then you can end up with a situation where there's a two on two and low on the edge or the winger on the edge is kind of just a little bit frantic on their feet and then they shoot up when no one else is shooting up and that's where Ireland have been getting caught on the edge pretty much time and time again match after match yeah. so I really am looking especially ahead of the All Blacks next week but against this very classy offence yeah. as well what are Ireland doing on defence are they going to change it are they going to go to a more aggressive pressure defence using their loose forwards to get on top of teams trusting Gary Ringrose to shoot from 13 trusting Josh to get up and be aggressive that's what I want to see from the Ireland defence, and that's definitely a point that I that I think that they, they should be emphasizing and focusing on yeah, this week. It was definitely it's a curious dry run for the All Blacks because stylistically Japan do have a similar ethos and a similar kind of uh, way they want to play the game. It's fast, it's technical, and it's very very uh, attacking based. Uh, yeah. So so it, it, like it, it, there are. Uh, levels to this game but as far as a dry run for an all-black test you could do a lot worse than than facing Japan the week before um, like you say defence is a huge factor because Ireland have dominated possession their pack has been mighty in, in all of their games this year and yet they have coughed up soft scores they were better at not doing that during the summer in their tier 2 games when, where well, they were I mean, they, they games. coughed up plenty against Japan. They get, no, you know, that's what I was going to caveat. It's like that's the one tier one game they couldn't contain. It was a change side, but they couldn't contain them. They, they're loose kicks. That is still a very bad habit of this Irish team is just out of ideas. Why not kick the ball away? Yeah, I think um, I, I like to think that Sexton in a ten yeah. will will bring him much more control. Mm-hmm. And actually, I like the fact that he's surrounded by Leinster, so he can kind of keep doing what he's been implementing in Leinster, which is quite a lovely looking attack. True, and um, they're yeah. moving the ball very well. They're mixing it up really, really well, and they're letting Sexton dictate things. And they're letting, and find they're letting some of their more um, aggressive back row forwards range out there yeah. and be further out in the line you might see Jack Conan pop up out in the wing playing centre yeah. even like it yeah. absolutely and yeah. that's definitely something that you're going to hope to see because from a ball playing point of view Conan and Ty Byrne are probably 
potentially two of our better distributing options. Yes, they're lovely, true. lovely yeah, yeah. footballers. This is it, and it sits um, people down, and it means they're going to win those collisions more often than not when they're lined up against backs out there, and they have good footwork and speed to to cope and handle that. Yeah, I'd like to see a little bit more of that playing them in uh, in different areas, like as much as. Uh, some of our, what our, our offence has done has been nice and we saw in that England game kind of two different sides to what our, what Ireland want to do with the ball and I would love to see them kick on from that. There was the Jack Conan try which was kind of cut straight from the Joe, school, Joe Schmidt school book, uh, playbook of just super patient like 30 plus phases that included like starting in the middle third phase, 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 cross field kick gathered into the 22 phase, 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 phase and eventually Conan pick and jam over which is just great discipline great technique to be able to resource those rooks time and time again and finally find the space that is one aspect of, of this Irish uh, offence that is very good when they're patient and accurate like that but then the other one which was the Keith Earls try from that one is such a vital cog as well because it was just off a line out on the 22 metre line over the back inside ball using Conan's great hands to kind of isolate that it was, it was that. a little deeper than the 22 actually it was near enough halfway in yeah, fact um, but, but it just yeah. giving that hole for a winger to go through and one strike move try yeah. it would be lovely to see the offence be efficient like that and score not only the multi-phase yeah. tries that are kind of the hallmark of them where they're going back and forth and doing doing this and, and working the ball so much and making the defence make so many tackles it's nice when you can get scores that are a bit cheaper than that and the yeah. All Blacks demonstrate that like. oh indeed and so you don't even have to look as far as the All Blacks look, at, look at Scotland mm-hmm. look at Scotland and how yeah. they use their set piece whereas for Ireland for the last couple of years it's great to see them working in I hope to see more of it but for the last couple of years really since the last year of Joe Schmidt 90 to 95 percent of uh of, of irish set pieces both line out and scrums have been a hit up from 12 just yeah. all of them that's just what you do off set pieces yeah. it's wrong it's bad and hopefully we're, we're going to adjust and be a little smarter than we have been yeah um from japan's point of view the yeah. the uh visiting team who we obviously don't aren't rooting for but um oh, it's, uh, too, it's tough to, tough to dislike them though oh it is jamie joe's a very smart man he will yeah. definitely have a plan to attack Ireland and we saw during even over the summer but obviously in that World Cup game as well how effective they can be against us and, and what a good kind of counter counterweight they are to us because as much as Ireland will try to wrestle control and try to dictate the game for most of the game the reactive and uh, the kind of nature of uh, of their offensive instincts means Japan can afford to soak and be reactive because they, if they can defend well and accurately and technically repel those runners with low yeah. chop tackles then once the ball gets looser if they can pounce on a loose ball they will transition yeah, very quickly just be the more clinical team and punish Ireland when they yeah. make mistakes and drop the ball like a, like a great soaking counter-attacking uh, All Black team absolutely yeah. right huge job for the the, the, the loose forward uh, combination from Japan as well James Moore even in a lock but Labish Gagne and, and, um, awesome, and yeah. Jimeno um, at yeah. 7 and 8 huge huge players for them they're up against really really top drawer uh, loose forwards in the yeah. Ireland in the Ireland team explosive physical and you know good on the ball yeah. if they can disrupt them if they can frustrate them if they can get Ireland slowing down and attack I think Gibson Park as well because yeah. Gibson Park while he is a good tempo setting scrum half he, he can be got at True. and I definitely think that if, 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 if Japan are to have purchases on defence and stop Ireland from doing what they want to do on the ball it'll involve making it a little messy and then getting after him yeah. and similar, forcing similar, mistakes similarly out similarly because one of the mistakes they made in that game that they ultimately lost to the Wallabies was not pressuring the halfbacks enough I think yeah. in Quaid and Tate McDermott they just gave them too much time to do what they wanted to do with the ball and ultimately it ended up costing them because the yeah. guys are bigger guys like some, sometimes they will be on the wrong side of the contacts and the collision zone here they are just a small, a physically smaller team so they got to bring that energy and that hustle and that like just Sheer, like at their very best, they're super technical. So they're, mm. they're always on the ref side because they're very technical. Like they, like, with the way they scrummage, they can get be the beneficiaries of kind of sloppy teams setting up wrong, and they're very compact and low. And um, but similarly in the tackle zone, just go low, go low, and like you don't have to worry as much about the offloading here as you would against uh, the against the All Blacks or yeah. against even the Wallabies. Now that being said, from an Irish point of view, I would like to see the forwards riding contacts and getting their hands free and getting the ball free more mm-hmm. often, as particularly in this but game. We know more. Often. Often, not, we don't it's do that, not yeah. going to do not going to happen as often as I'd like it to. Um, um, I think it's a good in for Ireland in this particular context, but Japan should be hedging with just stopping the runner, chop yeah. them down, chop them down, make them go through another phase. And yeah, the more phases we go through, the more likely we are to throw a loose pass or just kick the ball away. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I would love to look, I'd like obviously Bundyaki and Gary Ringrose. Ringrose has had his issues on defence. 
isolating him, trying yeah, to get Lafayette one on one with him. with runners um, either side. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and um, Kotaro Matsushima at fullback, that's an exciting selection. It is. He um, needs to be aware to the fact that the, the aerial game will be prevalent in yeah. this. In Dublin, it always is. Uh, Ireland with Sexton will bring a varied and very persistent kicking game that will yeah. test him all day, and he'll have to have his wingers in tow and, and mind that pendulum. Because occasionally, like in that World Cup, like I think it was Russia in their opening game, caused them all kinds of problems with the high ball um, yeah. as well. Even if Matsushima was on the field that day, as well so you can't allow Ireland that in because they do love that when the, when the yeah. bombs start working for Ireland the tails go up and then the pack starts looking exactly. imperious yeah, yeah. but if they kick a little loosely Punish he's them. a great man to have back there Definitely. that's Shima lovely offensive instincts great on the counter attack and I like him as a, as a full back in this multi-phase they obviously don't have Fukuoka anymore uh, sure. on the wing but I do like him as another option like I actually think Fafita um, has done okay and it'd be been interesting to see in, in, how, the, um, in that high ball context he was he was yeah. flawless against Oz um, to be honest I, I do like bringing Matsushima's pace in from yeah. fullback in the multi-phase just coming in sweeping you talk about isolating Gary Ringrose and when Ireland get a little narrow that's when they can get a little vulnerable and I just love him sweeping from deep picking the right lines to try and get to yeah, the edge give it of the over to Lafayette, he'll find yeah. him yeah, yeah, yeah exactly because exactly. Lafayette is such a neat distributor you can pick a late run and, and frag the Irish defence and we've sure. seen that the Irish defence when you bring a bit of speed and a bit of a bit of in, uh, smarts um, you can open them up we saw France do it with very limited op- yeah. uh, opportunities they still did it we saw Wales do it we saw Wales do it I mean you, absolutely yeah. um, Japan should be fancying it against the Irish edge defence in Definitely. particular keeping yeah. it away from the contact Definitely. as best as possible yeah, yeah. rook avoidance rook avoidance KBA yeah. all of that stuff is is very very much what uh, what Japan will be about they have they changed somewhat they've they definitely uh, evolved a little bit from that World Cup team as you said no Fukuoka and now Matsushima back in the backfield on his own a bit uh, their pace is slightly lessened in, their, in the wide channels they aren't quite as lightning quick as they were in the World Cup out there but their offensive mall looks a lot better. Uh, their pack look a little bit less shocked by physicality and more robust in terms of defending set piece and stuff like that. So they are building uh, to try and address some of the things that came unstuck for them when they met the Springboks in that quarter final. It's a very yeah. sensible evolution that we're seeing. And even like guys like Tamora coming on uh, at uh, 15 to give them two kicking options as well, where they sometimes kind of found territory sometimes hard to find, got hard to come by in top level games. These are good variations that are just the hallmark of a smart guy like Jamie Joseph is a very smart coach and this is a very skillful team and top league is full of pros now so I think they are still progressing very nicely and yeah they're a danger for anyone they're, they're a good team no, yeah. no doubt about it how do we see this one going in Dublin? Uh, I would like to see us controlled a bit more than we did in summer and be able to uh, maybe win by more than a score by being physical I like I back our pack in this matchup I do um, and I back them to not be gassing out in, in the Fukuoka heat I think it'll be the, the November in Dublin factor will mean that there won't be any fatigue issues I think at their very best the back row we picked and the pack we picked is so mobile but also so fit like Josh yeah. Josh van der Fleer does 80 minutes at a frightening clip uh, week in week out Ron and Keller looks the scary good and these days yeah. off the bench as well like I think there's a lot of power there I would like to see us scrum aggressively for penalties as well which we weren't always doing last season but the club sides have started doing that at the beginning of this season um, yeah I'd like like to see us be able to dictate the tempo of the game and maybe get the offense, The offensive stuff is, is secondary I'd like to see our defense contain them yeah. by controlling the tempo which which would start at the contact zone and start at the thing but it is a dry run for the I'm, offense I'm, I'm hearing what you'd like to see yeah I what, don't know what do you think probably a, probably an annoying shootout that we end up winning <laughs> yeah. but it's like god yeah, I mean, the yeah. Uh, it would bode poorly for next week if that's what happens yeah, yeah I don't know either I don't know look it's the opening game of the season Japan are scary yeah. we don't really know where Ireland are we're hoping um, that they come to town with the, uh, with the with the right attitude and play a good game um, it'll be a foot the first time in front of a home crowd which will make a difference to that in terms of fighting yeah the, except uh, it's fighting not it's, they're struggling to move tickets for it which is weird um, it and, is a shame uh, yeah no it is a shame and yeah it's like if it's a flat crowd and a non full of EVA and all of a sudden Japan come to play like yeah. I can, I'm definitely a little scared by this game I'm, I'm so so, bl- so blinded when, when it comes to predicting an Ireland game that I can't even Venture, I guess. I hope we win. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Okay, I'll pick a score. Will I? I'll, I'll yeah. say what thirty points to to twenty one. Yeah, something like that yeah. is what I've seen as well. As well, what I would like to see is thirty points to 
14 but uh, yeah, yeah. it could be 30 28 yeah it could very easily be 30 20 that was what we what we saw was a home yeah. here in, in the summer and uh, it'll be two one of the games the weekend I think one of the games of the weekend, think, yeah, the games of the weekend but stylistically it's great because they, they do like to play yeah. two very different games uh, themselves and there's push and pull and, and you know both sides have purple patches and it tends to look very interesting um, when, when either is attacking or defending so uh, yeah I'm, I'm going to be optimistic and say we win by more than a score because I hope that we do yeah um, all right well with that we are going to park that game our own charges and try and keep, put our emotions back into a little bottle yep. and uh, move on and look thank you for watching the overlap rugby podcast if you enjoyed that video please be sure to like and uh, share with your friends and if you'd like to hear more of what we have to say please be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when we upload our videos and uh, please join the comment section as well. We like to get a fun conversation going here.